Final Fantasy XIV's latest live deliver is currently going on and I'm just going to cover some of the job changes, job adjustments from this live letter. There are things such as the benchmark being fixed and some new characters and job trailer being shown. I'm not going to show any of that. I'll link it down below if you want to watch. And the characters that they're talking about at the end of the live letter stream that'll be linked down below in case you want to watch. I don't want to cover those because I just want to focus on the job changes. So keep that in mind. And with that out of the way, we can go straight into some of the things that talking about with job adjustments, as in every single expansion adds new actions, which you know that makes sense. And then they have made adjustments based on feedback and the goal of improving ease of use. And I really like this because as a controller player, there are some things that are just a little bit nuanced and I, I call it button bloat where there's buttons there that seem to be there just so you push an extra button that don't really do anything for you. So the fact that they're taking that feedback and doing ease of use, I think is a good thing. And they cover that and they basically fix this by having this action change setting. And if I understand this correctly, it basically means that you will be able to combine button pushes for inputs for like Gunbreaker, for example, there's continuation and burst strike. Right now it's two separate buttons on your hotbar. You would be able to combine this to one if I'm understanding this correctly. Or you could keep it the same. You don't have to. That's the best thing about this is you have the choice to for follow up counterparts. And I think that is a very huge thing to have um, because especially as a controller player, you have limited real estate. So this is a good thing for a lot of players, especially because it's optional. So I really like this thing and it combats button bloat, which is one of my biggest problems. And then we're gonna go on to tank changes. This is applying to all tanks, rampart and job exclusive 30% damage reduction abilities will be upgraded in level 90 and reprisals duration has been increased to 15 seconds for the level 90s range. I assume that means 91 to 100. Going on to Paladin changes. And there are some changes in here that aren't covered because they're not on the slideshow. Uh, I didn't take very good notes because I woke up late, so I'm sorry. So you have to deal with what's on the slideshow. <laughs> but Paladin is the second and third executions of atonement have been changed to new actions with a separate animation. Atonement will change to these actions. So input execution will remain the same. And then there's a new action that will be executed after Blade of Valor will be added. So for those of you who played Red Mage in the combo, after you use your melee combo, it has a continuation. That's essentially what a lot of jobs are getting. They're getting a continuation, which is even more important for the job setting that I mentioned previously. It just allows you to basically keep your same button layout. You just now have an additional action in between that shares the same actions that are currently already on your hotbar. And as long as this doesn't cause clipping issues, I think this is a great thing. Now onto Warrior, a new action which can be executed after three executions of Valcleave or Decimate while inner release is active, and then a new action that can be executed after Primal Rend has been added. So once again, they're, they're really going hard with the theme of continuation, and I think you kind of have to at this point with where Final Fantasy's jobs are. Uh, Dark Knight gets a little bit of a simplification as in to reduce the number of inputs during the burst damage window. Blood Weapon will be upgraded into Delirium and the effects of Blood Weapon will be added to Delirium. And the crossed out section because I have the video paused is a new action will be executed after Living Shadow has been added. Now onto Gunbreaker, a new action will be executed after Faded Circle via continuation, which you can now just have a four button combo instead of a three button combo. I love continuation, by the way. And a new three step combo has been executed after Blood Feast will be added at no cartridge cost. So that's another part of Gunbreaker's new kit. Now onto melee DPS and the upcoming changes for all melee DPS is second wind healing potency has been increased for the 90 level range and faint duration has been increased to 15 seconds for the level 90 range. Now if this could apply to at level 90 that would be nice but i doubt that's some copium so let's go on to the actual job changes and monk 
I don't know how I don't speak monk, so I'm going to read it and the monk mains can tell me what it says. Basic combo mechanics will no longer set around maintaining a buff or damage over time. Instead, performing actions in a certain order will increase the next action's potency. The feeling of the job will remain largely the same while alleviating uncertainties about which action to use when the rotation is interrupted. Okay, that sounds good and all, but I don't know what that means. It sounds like to me that instead of losing buffs and stuff and dots and stuff, your rotation is going to be a little bit more simplified and static, which overall I think is probably a good thing. Monk mains can tell me I'm an idiot in the comments down below. Can it accumulate up to a total of 10 chakra? Well, Brotherhood is active to prevent chakra overflow. So, you know, whatever that means. I know that's your gauge. Now onto my baby Dragoon. To reduce positional requirements for a single target combo, the fifth combo action has been changed to a new non-directional action, Drake's Bane. Fang and Claw and Willing Thrust have been changed to Drake's Bane, so execution will remain the same. This, I think, simplifies the combo, as in you should still have to alternate your third and fourth abilities, but your fifth one will always be Drake's Bane now, if I'm understanding correctly, I might be misremembering. Um, or your action's always going to be the same and Drake's Bane's will always be the fifth. But we will see when it actually comes out. I can't think while I'm reading this. And then the other one is to fill... And the other point is to facilitate maximum damage output at the beginning of a battle. Dragon of Life will be available without accumulating Dragon Gauge. So basically this means you will be able to burst off the start of a fight rather than having to wait for your one minutes and then your two minutes after that which that's a pretty good change for dragoon so i really like that part i think that should always been there so i think that's a good thing we'll have to see with the rest of the rework what happened and the last point is to reduce the number of inputs during burst damage phase certain actions will be removed or adjusted I don't know what this means. However, the fact that you had to weave like 36 different inputs in a two minute window of 15 seconds was kind of ridiculous as Dragoon. So if they could have reduced the amount of button pushes at that, it's kind of helpful. Like Monk, I don't speak Ninja, but Hu Tan's effects have been moved to a trait and will always be active. Hu Town will be changed to an AOE attack, which grants the effect of hidden. Actions while executed during the duration of Hutown's effect will be adjusted in accordance with the above change. Don't know what that means. I know you need mug for hidden or the other way around. It doesn't matter to me. You, you now know. You have the information. Do with it what you will. Now Samurai. I literally do not speak Samurai. I love Samurai. I know what the shiny buttons and symbols are. I cannot pronounce these skills. So... Go watch someone else for that. But to simplify recast management, Tatsuban will be changed to be executable after Mikoyo. I think that's how you say that. And then Hakaz, Takan, Gokan, and Madare will be upgraded to new actions. Okay, so if I pronounce any of those, please be proud of me and tell me I'm a good boy in the comments, please. If I didn't pronounce them right, please tell me how to pronounce them down below. Did I really just say call me a good boy? What's wrong with me? Anyway, Reaper. Reaper plentiful harvest effects will no longer increase the shroud gauge by 50 and instead will allow the execution of in shroud, which will now be used when the gauge is at 51 or more without waste. And then a new action will be executed while in shroud is added. So I do think a lot of gauge jobs that are dependent on gauge got some simplification. You'll see that in the future where instead of you getting gauge on an ability that were, were to grant you gauge, you just get the ability to activate whatever you need your gauge build for. You'll see that in Red Mage in the future. Now going on to physical range DPS, and I find it really funny that they all look like they just got insulted or they got yelled at for something, and they're like, how could you say that? But anyway, they did all get a second wind potency increase and damage reduction to job exclusive. Defensive abilities have been increased to 15%, so pretty good mitt changes there. It seems like everyone's getting some sort of self-healing buff and mitt buff on the DPS side. Now on to barge changes and once again please tell me I'm pronouncing things perfectly and not ever anything wrong but Mage's Ballard 
armies Perion and Wanderers Benute will be changed into buffing actions which do not attack enemies and perfect pitch will be changed to an aoe attack for ease of use in encounters with multiple enemies so that sounds like a pretty good change to me overall machinist is the next one and if you watch the job trailer you kind of see him dual wielding what looks to be like shotguns which i find hilarious but under the changes Barrel Stabilizer will no longer increase heat gauge by 50 and instead will allow the execution of Hypercharge, which will now be used when the gauge is at 50 more, 51 or more without waste. And this just goes into more jobs changes like I mentioned previously. It's just going to allow you to use Hypercharge instead of adding gauge. And a new trait which will accumulate and will be added to Drill. So uh, you have four drills now instead of three, so keep that in mind. Dancer, a new action will be executed after Flourish is added, and a new action which consumes in spirit can be executed after Technical Finish will be added. So, more buttons after buttons. Next on our list is Magical Range DPS, and this is a weird wording to me. Swift Cast Recast will be reduced from 40 seconds to 90 seconds. I only say it's weird because Swift Cast into saying recast was kind of hard for me. And 40 seconds is a very nice change. I believe Healers got this change as well. So I do think that's currently a lot better than what we have. I think I shaved off a third. So anytime I get to pump out more glares is gonna be nice. And then Adel's duration has been increased to 15 seconds seconds like every mint is just going longer once we hit level 90. Now we get to talk about everyone's favorite class black mage. You can thank Yoshi P for that. Various actions will be added to streamline certain aspects of the job such as restoring MP while landing ice spells while umbral ice is active instead of passively over time. Black mage can you tell me if that's that's a good thing? I think that sounds like a good thing. And then a new action <laughs> A new action which repositions ley line beneath the caster would be added. And I was kind of hoping instead of just a ley lines, you just get a second ley lines. I think that would be hilarious. And on to Summoner, and they said that we're adding a new action akin to Bahamut and Phoenix, such as Solar Bahamut. And if I remember correctly, they said the combo is going to go like Solar Bahamut, Bahamut, Solar Bahamut, Phoenix, but I might be misremembering that. And a new action will be executed after Searing Light has been added. Now onto Red Mage changes. Manification will no longer increase mana like every other gauge job, and instead will allow the execution of Enchanted Swordplay without cost, and then you will automatically use it at 51 or more, so nothing is wasted. And the last change is going to be an AoE Enchanted Swordplay combo has the reduction of mana cost to keep it in line with the single target counterpart. So you will just be using 50 black and white mana on the AoE part of Red Mage now. And on to Healer, the last set of rolls to cover. And the only change they got is that Swift Cast is reduced like all of the other casters to 40 seconds at the level 90 range. And White Mage, White Mage finally gets a dash. A new action which allows the caster to move quickly forward will be added. And a new AoE attack which can be executed up to three times after presence of mind will be added. One thing that they kind of noted that is all of the healer AoEs now add a dot or have an ability to add a dot somehow with an AoE, which is probably a good thing for healers, especially if we're going to get a lot of dungeons. It's one of the things about dungeons that healers were never really good at is applying dots. So anything that allows that is helpful. Now onto Astrologian which the rework is kind of interesting. So it says the card system will no longer be random and instead you will simultaneously draw cards with offensive, defensive, and curative effects. And they did mention this and allude to this is that when you draw a card, you're gonna draw a set of four cards. One of them's gonna be offensive, some of them are gonna be defensive, and then some of them are gonna be curative. They aren't going to be random. You're always going to get four cards, and then you will be able to use these four cards over the course of the minute, depending on the situation that you need. So if you wanna give your DPS an offensive ability, you can throw it at them. If you need to throw mitt, you have a defensive card. If you need to heal someone, you have curative cards for that. So instead of it being random, you will now have these abilities 
and there's going to be two different sets of cards so eight cards total and based off the assumption of this it just means that there's two sets of cards per two minutes and you get all the same effects every one minute is my understanding and then because of this astrodyne will be removed in accordance to the discontinuation of astro sign so overall the astro change does seem like it's more beneficial than what it's currently at. Now onto Sage, and for the sake of pronunciation, <laughs> Eucrasia will now be enhanced into the second ability, and Eucrasian, the second ability, an AoE which now deals dot over time to enemies within all of the range. So basically your AoE ability, if you use your Krasia on it, you will now be able to turn it into a AoE dot and a new party buff, which heals nearby party members whenever the caster casts a spell will be added. This is like a secondary Cardia, they said, and it's just, it's not permanent. It's not always on. It has like a timer on it so that you throw out the second Cardia and as I'm attacking, everyone gets healed is how I understood it. I totally didn't actually skip over Scholar and Seraphism is a new action which changes the caster's appearance into an angel for those of you who want to look like a white mage and enhances healing and magics will be added. And a new AOE attack which will be executed after chain will now be added and they did say even though it's not on the notes that this does have an aoe dot which i found that really interesting that they have all of these notes on here but they don't say all of the traits that jobs have they just kind of throw some stuff out there which is just like kind of interesting to me viper a fast paced job that fluidly strikes between dual blades and dual blade strikes in the various combos and actions as a similar total number of actions as other jobs but designed so that fewer actions needed to be set up on the hot bar which i think is a good thing some people might disagree and then here is a picture of the job hud and the gauge and then the video they go over a lot of the actions of how viper works and some of the combos and you can see how the combos kind of go over with each other and there's some memes going on on the social media site known as twitter because who's going to call it x where yoshi p like flawlessly triple weaves here in between gcd windows so like i don't know if that's a ping advantage or if yoshi p is using third party add-ons that's a joke um but you get to see some of viper's actions in uh first person or you get to see some of Viper's actions up front and also the fact that uh, you can see how many actions that there are totally with Viper and it does look kind of small compared to a lot of other jobs. It doesn't take up a lot of real estate. So I do think they accomplished their goal of what they're trying to do here. Um, I'm not gonna go over Viper too much more just because like, we will get to play the job relatively soon and this action trailer can only show someone so much now on to pictomancer there's now on to pictomancer this prepares for a painting of a variety of motifs then rendering them into life to produce an assortment of effects rendering multiple motifs and executive high <sighs> And on to Pictomancer, which is going to be everyone's favorite. I love this art, by the way. This is so cute. So anyway, prepares by painting a vary of motifs that renders them into life to process an assortment of effects, rendering multiple motifs to execute high powered attacks and then capable of granting buffs to the party and self. And you get to see that every 90s kid here is gonna love this job gauge. And then you get to see the pictures of what's going on. You could draw a dragon, you can draw a hammer. And I believe that's the blank canvas. And some of the um, images around here kind of show how big the hot bar is. And my favorite one, if I can find it real quick, is Yoshi P is just hammering away at a, what's it called? target dummy yeah and here's uh yoshi p showing off some of the motifs and how he had the hammer and now he just kind of gets to start 
hammering away at a target dummy, which I think is really funny as a Pictomancer just manifests into life a hammer that he uses to smash his opponents. So I thought that was really funny. But yeah, that's uh, basically some of Pictomancer, much like Viper. I'm not going to go too in depth on it just because like we haven't had a chance to play with the job. It does look really fun, especially because you get to hammer things. But I don't know. I really like the aesthetic of it. We'll see how it plays when we finally get our hands on Don trail now that's all that's all for the job trailer changes hopefully it helps you understand some of the changes a little bit better i'm gonna cover a few things that they showed at the end the fall guys event is coming back from may 23rd for june 10th and then also most importantly because we love collabs there's a mountain dew collab for the mountain zoo <laughs> mount i hate it here that's all for this video you guys have a good day have a good one bye